Greetings, I'm John Spear, and I'm slowly populating my bus, and it's actually quite fun, and welcome to Modded Factorio Super Shorts. As you can see, crushed coal is ready to get on the bus, and it's being used to fuel these five stone furnaces, which should be enough stone bricks for an automation science pack system. As usual, Ash is heading to the fast food forestries, but it looks like it's starting to clog up. However, part of that is obviously thanks to the wood that is clogged up as well. So at some point, I think I'm going to set up an ash separator as an overflow for all this ash. That some point is probably going to have to be soon. Thankfully, as I forgot, I do need ash for these planter boxes for the automation science packs, so that will be another usage soon. The main thing I need to do is just set up these small parts and have enough collectors around, and I think we'll be good. So I had this whole apologetic spiel about how I decided to move my native flora patch that was down all the way here, up here because this one's too tiny to add like nine more collectors to it. But because I keep forgetting to switch OBS to record Factorio and not YAFC, all of it is hidden under a bunch of YAFC. So annoying. So anyway, this native floor is too high up, and I know I have a lot of transport belts to pull it down with, but it's still like so high up. Oh my god. So I'm just going to stick a bunch of collectors right here. I'm sorry. I want to leave this up here anyway because I want to start using trains eventually, and I don't want to like shoot my shot and not be able to use trains to bring down materials. That'd be lame. It'll be good for basic infrastructure to have this kind of stuff and start training them around. But that's a long way from now. Nine barely visible collectors later, I have my native floor necessary for my system. Now to talk about the small parts. On the server I was on, we had enough iron and copper that it was reasonable for us to set up half a belt or a little less of small parts using these automated factories. But if I set up automated factories to just use all that iron and copper and make small parts, it totally will, but I'm not making enough yet until I expand my system. So I'm like... <laughs> So what I'm going to do is set these up specifically for the automation science system, but prepare them to be able to be thrown out onto the main system if I needed to. And I guess eventually I'll just make a bigger one, you know, why not? Anyway, I need eight automated factories total, so I will- oh, what? They require inner metallics now? No. God. Okay, we are taking a break from the um, automation science back thing and going to inner metallics, which was another of my goal for this episode. I'm going to go for that 3 per minute number again, because now that I have all these improved crafting processes, it seems more reasonable, and the first thing I'm going to do is stick duralumin and antimony oxide in a belt. Now I need two smelters worth of duralumin. God, these buildings are freakishly enormous. Now where do I need to get the syngas? The pipe visualizer mod tells me roughly where I can get different fluids, and it looks like my syngas fluid system, the easiest way to get it all would probably be to come up from, I don't know, right here. Okay, syngas is supplied to the duralumin friends, and now I can bring the duralumin up to this belt on the bottom. Alright, antimony oxide is now being brought up to the top side of the belt to join the duralumin. It's worth noting that this does need the plastic to run, but I'm going to continue to postpone that by taking out half this plastic bars and putting them all in the plastic bar chest over there once again. There you go, antimony oxide for days. Next up, I need to make sure titanium and nickel get on the bus, and I know- I happen to know that I have nickel down here. I'm going to put the nickel on the far side of the spell, because titanium is going to come from up north. Nah, wrong side. There we go. Nickel is up, now for titanium. Eventually, I need to reset this system, but I really cannot be bothered right now. I will improve it later. With titanium, nickel, antimony oxide, duralumin, iron, and copper on the bus, I now have everything I need to begin setting up intermetallics. I am using these belts way quicker than I am making them, and it seems to be mostly because all of these inserters are too slow. Look how colorful it is. Now I'm going to need both vitriloy and iron nexonite antimony for more things than inner metallic, so I'm going to make sure there's space on the belt for those items, but I'm not going to use them right away. I don't love that this really convenient molybdenum is right where my belt is, but I think I'm going to have trains before I need it or something? I don't know what I need molybdenum. Not till logistic science, which is a long time from now, and I'll have trains by then, so okay, cool. I need two more smelters, but I'll get them later. Mainly, I want to have the vitriloy and iron nexonite antimony going right now. Iron Nexal Antimony will always have, but to the far side of this, the belt is going to come out here, while these inserters for Vitraloy will pull onto the near side of the belt. That will give us a belt of both Iron Nexalite Antimony and um, I Vitraloy, sorry. I'm going to bring the Syngas down the middle of the bus uh, between two conveyor belt lines, just because, I don't know, I'm silly, I guess. Okay, Vitraloy and Iron Nexalite Antimony are now running. Alright, Intermetallics now has an advanced foundry that will take the Vitraloy and Iron x Light Antimony, and I'm going to put an output priority on the right here so that everything goes there first. I'm going to shove um, this Intermetallics into this chest and then potentially onto a belt, and I'm going to pretend that I'm going to add a belt right over here 
for the two items. Aluminium is soon to join this belt, so this belt's probably the one I'm gonna add the, um, the intermetallics to. Conveniently, aluminium is on the right side of the belt for that. I'm gonna run power down the side of the belt so that it's not really in the way of um, all of the belts that I pass through. I don't have to constantly like, oh no, I have to put a underground belt over this small electric pole. Annoying. Yay, intermetallics! All right, we've tripled our iron next light antimony output, and now we have our intermetallics running at three times the speed, which is three per minute. Thankfully, I now have sufficient intermetallics for the eight automatic factories I need. Do I have enough of everything else? No, but at least I can pretend I do. Now that I'm about to have a full-fledged automation science pack system again that can keep up with my Pi science pack system, I'm going to start researching again, starting with laboratory instruments, which I'm going to need rubber for, and which are eventually going to be used to make CDNA and therefore a WOG. So this is basically the next step in our progress toward logistic science. Here's my little small part system. I mean, it's not really little because they're automated factories, but it's still pretty small, and it's cute and symmetrical-ish. As I'm a terrible person with no sense of self-preservation, I decided to snap the soil extractor right down in the middle. Right here we'll make our automation science packs with some pipe spaghetti and luckily one spot for this inserter. I now have soil pumping into this planter box creator. And now we are technically making more than 10 automation science packs per minute. I must now decide whether to put pie science on the bus right now. I think the answer is no, mostly because looking at the rubber stopper recipe that uses rubber, it's actually the same amount of latex per rubber stopper, but you need to make a bunch of shit. I'm just gonna leave that over here and transfer automation science packs over when I need to. It's fine for now, right? Everything is okay. My next infrastructure that I should really be building is to put rubber on this belt so that I can make those tasty laboratory instruments, which unfortunately are not so tasty because they require iron next light antimony special alloys. Incidentally, also circuits, which tempts me to put circuits on the bus now, but that would require so much sap. Let's just focus on small steps for now, like rubber. In order to make latex for rubber, remember we need rocks. So I've just shoved a bunch of the excess rocks we had from the system into my inventory so that I can fill out future rock paddocks. I probably have a bit too much. Because of all this useless shit, except for maybe the meat that I can use for a wog power eventually, I'm researching composting so I can get rid of it all and turn it into biomass, which is useful for things. I need to decide about how many rock paddocks to have. I'm thinking potentially double so that the rest of it can support this build um, when I move it onto the main bus. But I also don't want it to be too big because I'm eventually going to use rock food and drastically improve, um, you know, the rock production system in general. So in order to limit the amount of rocks we put down, we do need to think about, like, how much latex our system can actually support given the amount of hot air we have. When I was running this reformer at full speed with five vacuums in order to fully run it, it was using way more hot air than I can produce, 12.5 per sec compared to the 7.5 per second I'm getting from this regenerative heat exchanger based on the two high pressure furnaces of coke. As far as I can tell, after running aluminium and hot air at full speed, I'll have just under five hot air per second. So let's see what I can do with four hot air per second. That will be equivalent to running this at, I guess, like um, two, one third speed. But even if, you know what, I think I'm going to try and make this something that only responds to a single vacuum. Because that would only use, um, I guess, 2.5 hot air per second, which seems reasonable for the amount of hot air I'm making. That said, I would get 0.1 carbon black per second. So I would need 0.05 latex per second. Okay, wait, strike that, reverse it. I forgot that I'm actually going to be feeding crude oil to this reformer, which will um, double the amount of carbon black per hot air. Great, that means with one vacuum, I can get 0.2 carbon black per second which means I need 0.1 latex per second. In extremely good news, these numbers work out to exactly double the system that we have for Pi Science 1. Rock paddocks required for the system are 5 and 3, just like for the system for Pi Science, which is 5 and 3. That said, I'm now going to unlink formic acid production and then force the building count of the slaughterhouse to be 1, so I know exactly how many rock paddocks I actually need looks to be 9 and 5. This also requires me to slap another three collectors on my system up there. It seems like it's also in my interest to set up a separate moss farm for rocks, but actually, I think what I'm just gonna do, since it seems small and I have excess muddy sludge and carbon dioxide, I'm just going to set up more moss farms in my wood area and route the moss to my rock farms. How fun! A little bit foolish, but hey, I have extra moss, why not use some of it? I'm going to be a silly goose and drop my moss farms down right here so that they can take advantage of my high pressure furnace and washer. This is the benefit of having a bus. You can just do excess shit. 
and then add more stuff when you want it. I'm amazed. I never understood the value of a bus until just now. And by just now, I mean in the last couple of episodes and the epiphany I received when playing on a server where they use an enormous bus. Wow, sure is scary to think about how little space I have left on this bio-reserve. Oops. Anyway, time to set up a cute little system in the sandbox. The one mild problem with this compact build is that it disrupts the animal tech duality. Sap happens to be useful for creamy latex as well as the frog panics. However, creamy latex eventually turns into latex latex, which is a solid item, and the latex can then be turned into rubber, but I would have to do it over here with the current system, and I don't know if I want to do that. Strike that, reverse it, I could actually just transmit the creamy latex and the formic acid all the way across the bus to the left because the underground pipes are wide enough to traverse it, and they're really only needed for the build on the left anyway. This is obviously the better, if stupider, solution and therefore I will temporarily cease making this any worse. Other than to slap down a couple composters that can compost all of this tasty mess, and shove it all into some kind of storage, the biomass that we get for the composting. I don't know what to use the biomass for yet, but it will become useful for certain things like subcritical water, which is needed for something in logistic science. In a stroke of silliness, I'm going to take the biomass up from this deposit and put it into the Brenner assembling machine. So I guess I am making things more stupid. Isn't it fun? Anyway, I've simplified things out, added probably all the inserters I need, hopefully, question mark, question mark, question mark. So now I just need to build it. I need to build six more rock paddocks, I think. For these two composers, I need 20 intermetallics, but I have over 200. How amazing. How absolutely incredible. I can't believe we just did this in this episode. I will never run out again, and by never, I mean when I get trains. God, I wish I could just cart latex all the way from the bus over here, because when I eliminate half of these items to fill out my system over there, Pi Science is just gonna stop working. And I mean, we have so much backlog, but still. Ah, well, what can I do? I guess I'm gonna be forced to move the pie science system, but, you know, I mean, I'll have all this extra pie science. Like, it's like automation science that's more important right now anyway. I can do a lot of researches with these pie science, and by a lot, I mean, like, probably ten or so. I mean, it just gets worse and worse as you go down the tree, but, like, you know, it's fine. Latex was, like, half of this entire build anyway, so I'm not really gonna have to transfer that much stuff. Anyway, I'm just gonna keep telling myself tasty lies. It's good to see things placing themselves down on a large scale, uh, instead of having to put them all down myself. Okay, the system is starting to run smoothly. Obviously, it has to stockpile on rock cocoons and everything so that these rock paddocks can start working. So eventually, after a while, it will start um, filling in the full render again. Now that I've got a line that's going to go in this direction for both formic acid and creamy latex, I can start um, designing up my destructive distillation column system for latex. The buildings for latex slabs are the destructive distillation column, a high pressure furnace, three so uh, two soil extractors for limestone, and five CV crop facilities. I'm also going to need steam when I turn latex slabs into latex, but I'm going to get that for free from polybutadiene. Anyway, sodium alginate is hooked up, and therefore so are the latex slabs. In good news, all of our rock farms are now running, which means our full render of rocks should eventually be running at full speed. Now I can build a heavy oil refinery, which will make me rubber from my latex, and also obviously other stuff. Heavy oil refinery is not as large a boy as I thought it was. For the polybutadiene, I need titanium, which I can get pretty easily, water, which I've already derived, and aromatics. Conveniently, I have a nice tar overflow right here meant exactly to make aromatics. Okay, aromatics is attached, and hopefully it will keep chugging along and will make enough aromatics. If it doesn't, I'm gonna have to have yet another tar production system somewhere. YAFC tells me that I do apparently need just over one tar processing unit producing creosote, so I guess I'll make that now. Factory Search is really good for telling me that there are no tar processing units anywhere that I can just randomly source in order to fill this out. No, the other two tar processing units are being used for the circuit system. Point is, here's another wonkily placed tar processing unit with the benefit of extra spaghetti. Alright, titanium is coming down to enter this polybutadiene creator. I'm gonna put a nice little steam storage tank here because I am eventually going to want some of this extra steam for the agar that I need for that system over there. Yay, polybutadiene. Yay, latex. And now that I've put my stockpile of carbon black right here for this system to take from, I have my first supply of rubber. How exciting. I do need to move the actual reformer over here, and I need to get excess crude oil from this bitumen seep all the way down here. But I will do that later behind the scenes. This episode has gone on long enough, my god.
In the next episode, we'll start work on producing cDNA, an object which requires, um, I guess there's this other research up here that I need to do, alright. For now, however, that's it for today's episode. As always, if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. I hope you enjoyed!